Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Everhart Museum's Second Sunday's Folk Art Series. We have the pleasure and honor each month to come to you to introduce folk and traditional artists from across the six county region of Northeastern Pennsylvania, which includes in the Endless Mountains, Susquehanna and Wyoming County, in the Valley Cities, Lackawanna and Luzerne County, and in the Pocono Mountains, Wayne and Pike County. An enormous terrain, beautiful geography, dotted with rivers, lakes, towns, and in creative artistic traditions that come from many countries and across many, many centuries. And it is those people who have chosen to spend their lives preserving, passing along, and teaching and performing these traditional arts, these folk arts that come from the traditions of the people. And today we have the pleasure of being joined by Frank Little Bear. Frank has been a long time resident of our area, now living just outside of our region, but still continuing to work in our region. He is a Native American educator with a doctor of Native American studies. He is a performer, a presenter, an artist, and a cultural um, expert who is sought after internationally for his advice and his um, counsel on how to present the story of different tribes, nations, peoples, as we are trying to find our pathway forward in a more inclusive and more detailed understanding of our combined cultures. Frank, thank you so much for coming to join us today and uh, share with us your amazing path that continues forward and helps us all find a, a better way to our paths forward. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm uh, honored to be here and to be able to do this and work with you guys on uh, all these projects we have going on and uh, the continuing efforts that we have collectively for, you know, the arts and uh, outreach and entertainment. And, and it's just, uh, it's, it's been amazing, the people that you get to work with and meet that are very like-minded with these goals. So... That's great. We have um, so much to talk about. And honestly, we would, this would be like a 10 part series if we really got to do justice to, uh, you know, to your range of interest, to the history that you preserve in your artistic traditions. And this is especially an interesting conversation because for your culture, the preservation of your artistic forms is also an attempt to, con to maintain the presence of the culture in our society, because we have on many occasions, you have survived attempts to eradicate, erase, change, um, ignore the fact that your culture is so vibrant and alive. So every time you perform, every time you present and teach these things, it is an act of survival. It is an act of continuation. Yeah, there is, you know, you really kind of hit the mark there too. It's, you know, I'm humbled the fact that I have an ability among, you know, many individuals that, uh, like I said, that share this pathway or that try to keep the traditions or to try to keep the artwork going, uh, whether it's within their territories um, or off their ter or out of their territories. And, you know, a lot of the, the things that we do is goes back to what our ancestors uh, you know, put forward was, you know, we live and die for this. This is our way of life. This is who we are. This is much more than just something you do on a weekend, the powwow, or you just do for, you know, in a book, you know, capturing a moment. Although those are important avenues to promote what you are and who you are and, and what your goals are. Uh, but the big, the big idea is that the, the main body of what we're looking to do is again, just really kind of keep pushing forward on keeping the culture alive, keeping it moving, um, giving voice to those that don't have a voice. You know, um, there's so many wonderful, talented people out there um, that are now using platforms like this, uh, you know, to to help share that message and uh, different pages that are going up and, and outreach and things. And I think it's it's opening more and more people's eyes to the fact that, you know, we're not so marginalized as as we were before that you know we are as equal 
more now than ever, and that there's a lot more going on that most people don't even recognize or realize, um, not just as a minority culture, but just as artists, just as entertainers, uh, just as advocates, as politicians, you know, as healthcare workers, as uh, people of industry, you know, there's so much that we have to offer and continuing to do so. And, you know, we're in this big time switch where we're going through pandemics and we're going through all these things and more and more people now are switching back to those, you know, what are those natural arts, you know, what are those, you know, th those, uh, those things that that our ancestors did you know who preserved those things and you know uh, i like to say our our tribal nations really did help to preserve it you know being you know uh, some of the best in, in doing that because we've you know we've kept our identity in one way or another kept our, our heritage going you know through all those all those trials and tribulations so and you've you've maintained a connection that's what i, I love about your your artistic um, breadth is that you've maintained a connection with so many different art forms. You are not just a musician. You are not just a dancer. You you sing. You make beadwork. You make um, instruments. You mm. make regalia and leatherwork. And um, so I'd like to have a chance to kind of show people a little bit of all of these things as we go across. And um, but in your early days as like, what are your earliest memories of, of understanding that you were part of a tradition, that you were part of something special that needed to be uh, preserved and what made you interested enough to, to dive in and pass it on? Did you know that even as a child that you wanted to be part of the continuity? So funny, uh, funny story behind that inspiration with me. Um, you know, we, our family's like the, the fifth generation, basically, that is born out of our territory. Um, born out of your territory. Yeah. Meaning yeah, not my, in your original. My, yeah, yeah our, my nation is pre, uh, uh, my family actually comes uh, from the Saskatchewan region, Northern Plains, Cree, Saskatchewan region of Canada, of the Sweetgrass Territory, and the Sweetgrass Reserve there. And what's interesting about it is, you know, like, like my grandparents and stuff, you know, they, you know, they would teach us things, you know, they lived on the East Coast, and we'd go up and visit them. And, you know, growing up, I had an opportunity to, you know, travel and visit those different areas. And not only there, but, you know, um, my parents and stuff, we'd go to like different events and festivals and ceremonies and stuff. We were traveling all over. Um, and, what was kind of cool about it was like, for me, it was like a normal everyday thing. Like I, I remember like there were summer times we'd go away and do stuff and I'd come back and I'd be talking to kids at school about it. And they'd look at me like I had, like I was totally talking a different language. They're like, what are you, you know, dancing around saying, what are you doing? Like, what is, you know, what, what are you talking about? So, and uh, so I was kind of looked at a little different in that regard. And I'm sure most uh, most indigenous people were. And I was really proud of that. I thought it was like, the coolest thing in the world growing up. Um, for me, one of the things that really hit home uh, more on a personal note is when I was about nine, I lost sight in my right eye. I'm not going to go into a whole detail as to how, but um, that was one of the, the, the pivotal points that sort of affected me in a sense. And the reason why is not because of what happened and how it happened. The, the thing was, is that my culture always taught me that there's something that each of us can do and is greater than us. And it's part of that fire that, that we nurture inside of us. And that fire eventually burns as bright that it can be seen all through the universe. That's one of the old stories in a sense, you know, why we see all the stars up in the sky, you know, it's uh, a piece of, you know, all the ancestral fires that are out there burning from different worlds or different galaxies or whatever. So we had a really good understanding very early on, even in, in you know, our cultural history of, you know, we're much bigger than just this little, you know, ball of mud, water and rock that we're on. You know, there's a lot of greater things out there. and We're just one aspect of it or one drop of that. But we are here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. So as I was growing up and, and going through that, I was kind of over the accident part of it, but I wasn't over how people were treating me. So I kind of had like two different things where individuals were judging me based on my heritage and culture. 
Okay. Uh, and sometimes not in a positive way. And then also because I was, you know, visually, physically different, you know, being blind in one eye. Um, so I had to deal with that aspect of it too. Um, and I was kind of a quirky, weird kid as it was, you know, I just, you know, growing was? up, I, I still am. I really am. And I'm, and I'm still a kid. But, but the thing was, like, my art and the things that I did was a great way for me to express, you know, um, you know, how I was feeling, what was going on, what was important to me. It, it gave that sort of silent voice to things by people looking at me like, oh, wow, there's a lot more going on here possibly than what we think. And even there's people that, you know, they just don't get it, of course, you know, um, and then there's others that do. And I think that was a, that was the thing that inspired me the most. It's like, you know, I wanted to be that advocate and voice to say, hey, this is why we keep doing what we're doing and why it's important to me, because there's others like that out there and you know our understanding even within our you know history within the u.s i mean we didn't have our freedom of religion until the 1970s um you know it wasn't until the 1980s when you know people were you know really kind of catching on more to stuff um you know there's so many things that people didn't understand about what was going on on the reservations and uh between the lower 48s and even up through canada um you know, there's all these different things that were going on. That's like, wow, I wish more people knew about what, you know, what was happening. You know, I remember, you know, we'd go to rallies like AIM rallies and the American Indian Movement. And, you know, we'd listen to some prolific speakers and individuals and got to meet some just terrific, inspiring people that shared some horrific stories of things that they have to go through every day. Yeah. Um, and I felt, you know, that's also important. Like if I can through my art or, or preserve something and then I kept hearing aspects of like oh we're we're losing this you know we're losing our language um we're losing uh this style of beadwork we're, we're losing this history the oral traditions um you know and there was a generational gap where people you know and even still today they're they they live in two worlds which we'll get to in a little bit but you know some pick one over the other mm -hmm. um and for me, it was kind of like, I've always wanted to be connected. I've always wanted to remind people the importance of that. And one of the things was music. One of the things was art. Um, it was all about that heartbeat rhythm. Mm. Uh, it's that path that you're walking in each step is that heartbeat. And, you know, it's not a shortcut in life. It's taking that long road. And if you take the long road, it's not so much the destination. It's about the journey. Mm. And that's really why I try to do what I do and why I try to expand in so many different directions. Um, you know, some people have, have complimented and humbled me by saying, wow, you're, you know, so great at this. And I, you know, I look at it like, no, I really need to still keep working on it. You know, um, that's because, pretty much a hallmark for, for people who have been long time yeah. artistic practitioners is yeah. you never, receiving, you never, receiving compliments, but knowing that you're yeah. not even anywhere near to where you want to be on your journey as an artist. Yeah. And, and that's really, you know, that's really part of it. And the fact that people see that and appreciate that, mm -hmm. um, you know, share in that and are willing to also want to learn part of that, um, you know, uh, my some of our ancestral beliefs go back to the fact that if one person holds on to one word of a language, then that preserves the entire culture. Um, you know, it's the same thing with art, uh, with music. You know, if we can remember one thing, folk music, um, you know, traditional arts, uh, fine arts, something, a technique, we hold on to it, it never goes away. Right. Um, and it'll be remembered and passed on. And that's that's sort of the thing if, you know, as, as a, as an individual, yeah, as a human being, um, even beyond my own heritage, my own culture, uh, you know, I felt that that's what I wanted to do. Um, you know, you and, to be and part of that. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you see people that are like, Oh, you know, the sort of politics aspect of it, um, you know, where they're like, Oh, you know, uh, you're not from that nation or tribe. Why are you doing that? Well, I appreciate it. I admire it. Um, somebody, you know, I had an elder show me how to do it and yeah. I figured I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do it, you know, because yeah. I, I just wanted to learn that technique. I wanted to learn how to do that.
I love your concept that you got off, you know, you kind of mentioned about when you were a child using art as a communication tool for saying yeah. the things on your own behalf that you weren't able to express verbally or have the time yeah. verbally, but in the participation and the demonstration of your arts, you were able to speak so much more, many, many volumes beyond what we can speak verbally. Um, and that continues you know that process even as you're maturing and our culture is changing and you know this is all part of that is that um, why do we participate in the arts for preservation for connection for um, that communication beyond what we can speak to each other with words absolutely and that's you know that that's the whole segue as far as my lectures and shows go too it's you know if I can inspire one person to realize that like I see what this individual is doing in their heritage and culture and their beliefs. And I know that in somewhere in my history, in my family lineage, there's the same thing. Um, that'll inspire me to want to get up and do that too. It, you know, want to be an advocate for where I come from, for who I am, for my faith, my spirituality, my heritage, my family. Um, you know, to, to that that's one of the, the the things that I try to inspire the most is getting other people to share their message and voice, whether it's from another tribal nation or just from any ethnicity, any culture. Um, you know, and the arts is, is really is is a great way to do that. I mean, there's so many different avenues that, that we can explore and and stuff. I think it's uh it's so important for us to to continue doing that and inspiring others. I still get inspired, you know, when I see other people's work and I'm like, man, I, I want to try that. I want to yeah. learn from that. So, what yeah. um, when you were a kid, which of of the arts that you still practice today, which one caught you first, and did you like try first, and is that still the one that you're the most connected to, or like how did that evolve? So, so I I've always been one to try to cast a broad net because I just had a lot of interest. Yeah. Um, I think the one that inspired me the most uh, was always kind of like sketching and drawing. Um, that was just one of the things I'd see different techniques of people that would do some just incredible figure art and uh, realism and things like that. And I was like, man, I, I'd love to capture that in the drawing too. So, you know, that was one of the things that I, I started with early on. Um, it, it then went to sketching out patterns and designs, which then I translated into beadwork and leatherwork. And the funny aspect of that is, you know, we go to events and shows and stuff and I'd see people, phenomenal artists that were incredible in what they did and having fully beaded regalia and all this stuff. And it was just, you know, like an in awe moment, you know, for you're looking at this stuff and seeing people that would uh, sell those items too. And then you see the price tag of them and you're like, holy Christmas, um, you know, like I'm gonna need to save up a lot for that um and that was that that was you know jokingly but actually you know realistically it was one of the things that actually inspired me to really get into doing beadwork too because I was like I wonder if I could make something of that and I remember I was talking to um a couple of individuals and you know they were they uh, different artists and stuff and you, we got into a conversation about some of the beadwork that they had uh, and they said, you know, nothing is more meaningful than when you make it yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, you can buy things. Absolutely. You can buy and support artists and, yeah. and, and, and stuff like that, which is incredible, but giving yourself the opportunity to make it yourself, you know, especially if you're going to wear it yourself and stuff like that is, uh, it is, gives you a whole new understanding and appreciation of it. And the, I think the most interesting thing that I've ever learned about all my work, um, even from a kid to now is the flaws that I put into it purposely. Mm -hmm. So everything has sort of a mistake. It's like a marker bead. And the reason why I do that is just because it's just to show the imperfections. I'm not a perfect human being. Um, it's it's meant to be imperfect at times. Uh, somebody may look at it and be like, this is amazing. Some may look at it and be like, oh, it's garbage. Um, but I've always put some sort of flaw in every single one of my designs. And the reason for that is just, again, just to show that I'm in a imperfect human being, and this is my creation. Mm -hmm. And that, that gives the 
sort of the best part of May because that's the hardest thing for people to understand too about themselves is that it's okay to be imperfect. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to, to, to see that. So like some of my bead work, like in my regalia, I have a marker bead. There's one bead that's completely out of place or a different color from the entire motif. Um, there's, uh, you know, there's stitch work that I've done on leather bags and stuff where there's just one aspect that's just completely out of sorts, but you really have to look for it. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's, but that's just sort of my, my own signature. I know, I, I think a lot of our artists probably do the same thing. Um, but I think it's important to be able to do that to show that we are imperfect and it's okay to make mistakes. It actually makes some of the pieces turn out better because you already know, like, nah, eh, you know, it's going to be what it's going to turn out to be. Some, some of the things that we were taught growing up and um, that's, you know, within our custom, uh, customary beliefs is that, you know, if people come to you and ask for your help, ask for your guidance, um, in accordance to our medicine wheel of our four directions, we can't turn them away. Um, and this is something I, I definitely believe in a lot. You know, for some reason, they're on their own path and they've come to you for another reason, whether it's by God, whether it's by, by spirit, whether it's by just sheer, you know, ambition and movement, but something put them on a journey and they met you and they've come and they've asked, hey, can you show me or help me with something? Uh, sometimes that can be a, a, a difficult challenge because you want to show individuals every aspect of what you are of what your culture has to offer. Because if they are put here for that reason, then you're giving them the choice, which is the most important thing that we have in this entire life. Um, to continue on the path or to realize that this is not the path for me. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that by shutting someone else out. You can't do that by telling somebody, you know, oh, this is not meant for you because this is just our cultural thing. This is just our thing. Um, you know. My grandparents always taught me that, you know, if, if somebody ever came to you and asked you in a good way, in a very humble way, um, in a very passionate way, um, you know, take the opportunity, if you know, to show them. And if you don't know, then lead them to where they can find that knowledge, because you don't know what that person's growth is going to be or, or what they're going to contribute um, to their life or to somebody else's uh, story in the long run. Um, and if you try to get in the way of that, sometimes, you know, you can upset the balance. Um, and that was sort of one of the things like in nature and the environment and the world, uh, we see how, you know, people decide to be shying away or not showing somebody something or, or helping an individual the best that they can, even though they are, they have the ability to, um, and it can be detrimental, you know, um, not again in every case, but, uh, you know, like I said, I just, so I guess that's part of those personal struggle things. I know there's, there's, uh, different uh, tribal members out there that are, you know, very adamant. And this is solely for our nation and our way. And even during some of my, um, uh, some of the programs and events with our dance team, you know, we'll explain to our audience, like, you know, this is this dance, like, for example, like uh, our Eagle dance, like we'll do an Eagle dance. Um, there's a few different styles of that. And yeah, three of the styles are ceremonial. The one that we do is, uh, open to the public it's it's a public presentation that we do uh, it's non-ceremonial and i always have to put that little uh disclaimer in there too just because i want people to understand if they you know they're recording or they're going on like oh we saw a ceremonial eagle dance and they're like you know um it's it's important that they get that information you know um and then and like i said when i was growing up with the arts and, and doing things and stuff that i continue today it's it's really learning about all those different aspects you know um you know what what is the the the, the differences in you know what makes this important to a person and, and why it's important right. um why it could be ceremonial why it could be uh whatever the case may be right. um you know it's important like i said to to dive in to every aspect of it um not just take bits and pieces of what you have because that is the difference at the end of the day between, you know, you know, cultural appropriation and cultural yeah. appreciation. Yeah. Um, it, it's such a, it's such an interesting concept because then we're also talking about 
you know, what comes into some, the sacred, right. You know, which is a really interesting thing. And I mean that just as a, you know, what is sacred to a culture? I'm not talking religions necessarily talking about of, of deepest importance, the core of a philosophy, the core of a way of life of being on this planet. Um, Those are really important spaces and it's important to protect those. And at the same time, it's important to be able to share. So you have spent your entire career and and I've gotten to, I've been honored to see a good long bit of it. Um, But what always astonished and delighted me was how hard you work to be a, a piece of preservation of your cultural arts, which are the heart of your culture. It's not separate from you. It's not your right. culture and your cultural arts. They are an expression of all everything. Different. It's all one. And so you're trying to preserve, maintain, present that while also trying to be multicultural and show how we can all move forward together, despite an insanely difficult and brutal and violent past together. Right. And I'm talking about, you know, just in our country, also Canada, you know, but uh, the, the struggle of indigenous people all over the world. It's an astonishing path to try to take, you know, you might as well be riding two wild horses, one foot on bareback on the back of each horse who are running along next to each other and trying to keep your balance and trying to help guide them to stay, you know, parallel to one another. It's, I, I don't know how you do it. Um, yeah, sometimes I don't, coffee, <laughs> a lot of coffee. Um, you know, it's it, looking at it in different ways for me, it's, you, you do by living, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's, that's a big aspect of it. It's important to understand the comparisons and the understandings that we all have these commonalities, you know? We're separate by our heritage, um, by the pathways, but at some point, everybody's history, we've all had some major struggle and still go through those struggles, uh, whether it's on a personal level, whether it's on a world, uh, you know, cultural level, all these different things. Um, you know, that's sort of where we kind of, or where I try to go with a lot of it is, you know, what, what is the things that connect us? You know, what are things that bind us, yeah. you know, um, for our people, I mean, we had the Vikings and this is kind of a cool thing. So we had the Vikings that came across here 500 years before Columbus. And, you know, we opened up a trade with them, you know, uh, they eventually, you know, went through their struggles and everything else. Um, but we learned so much, you know, uh, we grew from that. And, and I think those are the things that sometimes people forget is that we are all intertwined as human beings. We share one planet. Um, you know, there's, there's of course, different stories as far as, well, you know, all life started here and kind of migrated around and stuff like that. Then there's the other theory where we kind of all flourished in our own little territories and then kind of intermingled throughout the some odd hundred thousand years and something we've been on the planet as far as human beings go whatever the case or whatever you believe in it's important to know we're all connected in some way that there's there's something that we can reach out to that that can say hey you know we have a symbol in our in our culture that is important to us and then we find that it's just as important as it is in another nation another culture and you know there's that there's that connection um you know there's that shared philosophy there's shared principles um Mm -hmm. There's those things that we can support each other on. It's, you know, opening up those doorways. And globally, again, I, I, you know, try to take myself out of being more than just a indigenous artist, just as a human being, you know, just as a person that finds that this is important to share, important to give back, important just to keep creating, you know, teach my kids, hey, you know, this group of people in this country did this thing or cook this meal or learned how to do this, you know, this would be kind of a cool thing to, to, to figure out, to learn. And, you know, you learn by doing, you know, the, one of the uh, aspects of my presentations and programs has always been not just to tell you something or show you something, but to get you involved. Yeah. Cause if you can get involved, you can truly understand. 
And that was one of the things that I found from my parents and from my grandparents and from a lot of my family was that, you know, you'd go to different places and you were getting involved. Um, some things you'd be like, what am I doing? You know, <laughs> like, why am I doing this dance? All right. You know what? I'm just going to go with it. Let's go. You know, this song is totally crazy. I'm going to sing it anyway. Why not? Um, I feel silly because I'm wearing this thing on my head. I'm shaking a rattle. I don't know. Um, whatever the case may be. But by doing that, you get a totally new understanding, a new, totally new appreciation as far as not only the fun, but also the importance, you know, that connection. You connect to it. Yeah. Um, and as human beings, I think that's one of the things we sort of, you know, everybody wants to change the world, but nobody wants to change themselves, mm. you know. And we sometimes have to reach deeper in, in ourselves, hum, you know, humbly to figure out that, you know, yes, we are all human beings. We all have a place at the table. We all have an importance and we all need to start listening more um, with each other, not just, you know, alienate because we do have a lot more in common. It just seems like all the, all the anger, you know, all the things that, that want to be separated are, are, are what takes the forefront and it shouldn't really be like that. We don't, you know, we, we don't focus much, much on the negative, um, you know, the atrocities and stuff. And, and when we do talk about those things, you know, we talk about it within balance, you know, as you know, for all those people that, that, you know, have passed all those children, you know, um, that have been missing, um, there's still people out there giving a voice. So that's hope. And if you have hope, then you have a connection. And if you have that connection, then that spark that we talked about earlier, it never goes out. And that's the most important thing in life is not to allow that spark to ever go out. you're talking about when you try this and when you try that it's it's so important to be able to do that and and yet you do it as an extremely trained person you know you're, you're not going as a non-trained person you you are trained in the history of you know your nation and in many many other nations but you're also you know going back to the traditional and folk arts that we're talking about you're highly trained in these arts as well over you know generations and over a lifetime at this point how did you feel as a child being trained you know do you remember your training processes and how did you feel about it then and then the flip side is now that you are the trainer how do you feel about this you know the training that it takes to truly um and again not master, but have a lifetime of practice. How, you know, how did that feel as a kid versus now? Well, I know when I was a kid, it was, it was sort of one of those things like, hey, let me show you something. Or somebody would be doing something and I'd be watching them and I'd be like, hey, you want to learn how to do this? And uh, I'd be like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, um, for example, like par fudge cases, you know, making things out of rawhide, um, you know, soaking it and then forming it and then shaping it and then painting it and putting it all together. And then at the end of the day, you have like an envelope or a box or something like that, um, or how to make a drum and then realizing that, you know, it takes several days to do that. Um, but learning all these different processes, it, it became, for me growing up, it was like, wow, this is really, really cool. Uh, resources, of course, you know, uh, yeah, to sort of start thinking outside of the box on stuff. But it was it was always kind of one of those scary and at the same time welcoming experiences because you know, even then, hey, I'm 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 learning something, I'm doing something, you know. Uh, may not be what that person just did because I'm just beginning, but I'm uh, I'm I'm getting the hang of this and uh, you know you get that, that new sense of pride, like, wow, look what I did. Um, and I think that was, you know, growing up, that was one of the things that, you know, for me, cause I was not a popular kid. Um, 
you know, I was, like I said, I was different. I was sort of like, you know, uh, I went to public school in the East Coast and I was made fun of, picked on all the time. And um, I had people always, you know, making odd jokes, which gave me a, a very warped sense of humor. Um, As which a I, defense mechanism, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that and and just, you know, I, I wouldn't change any of that, though, you know, at the right. same time, because it's kind of like, you know, some I'll say certain things, certain comments and people are like, is he is he being serious or is he joking? Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> you know, I can, I can laugh at very awkward and uncomfortable situations because I've been through that. Yeah. And I think that's part of the adversity that we try to teach other people to, um, with the arts, there was, there was times when you're extremely uncomfortable with learning how to do something. You don't know if you're doing it right. You're really struggling with something. Um, you know, you really want to make the person who's showing you proud because they're very serious and stoic about it. Um, so, and you figure, oh, if I don't get this right, I wonder if it's going to offend them. Um, you know, and then, you know, somebody cracking off color joke about something and you're like, oh, I guess it's okay. You know, cause we're all just living in a moment. So for I love me, that, it was always- the, just the helping people understand that life is full of moments where you are not sure if you're going to do it right. And to, to right. step, to step in and just walk through it anyway. And I, I think that's the fear factor of that experience that people do not allow themselves to do in the arts. Um, They won't because of the fear, because they're like, Oh, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to do this. Um, If you come in a good way, and this is my thing. If if anybody ever came to me and said, Hey, can you tell me what happened to your eye? Or can you tell me why do you have long hair? Or why do you do this? Um, You know, uh, whatever the case may be, I'm glad to explain and talk in detail and depth of whatever when it's in a good way you know it doesn't have to be you know the politically correct way understood it it's has the spirit to be inside the question yeah right and i think that's that's sort of what people nowadays they fear the most it, they figure you know let's let's not let, let's not do that because that belongs to a culture and we don't want to be you know taken like we're doing something wrong with it right um you know, there's a common sense approach to it, of course, you know, um, you know, the, 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 the Indian costumes on Halloween, you know, maybe not such a great idea, but, you know, um, you know, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't show appreciation, that you shouldn't um, try to get involved. Um, you know, if you see people that are struggling, you know, in a movement for something, you know, whether it's, um, you know, the, like with the Board of Education, and they're doing a big overhaul on uh on, on Native American history, customs and culture right now, how it's administered and taught in the, mm-hmm. in the schools. Uh, one of the things that I've been working on, one of the projects is helping um, them sort of, you know, what, you know, where's the balance between the, you know, like the Cowboys and Indians and, and the old history and where we're at today that, you know, through every grade level now we're, we're pushing that, that there is a progression and there is an, a connection to modern history so people don't forget that we are still here that, you know, we are, um, you know, we're not, some of our people, not just living on reservations, we hold, you know, offices in the government. We, you know, Sorry. we're the highest members in, in the branches of the armed services. Um, but that also doesn't mean that they shouldn't approach and ask them about their heritage and their culture and who they are and where they come from and stuff like that. So, like I said, I think it's just like, it's a balance and there's a fear factor. We, people don't allow themselves to really do um, because they're too afraid to offend, you know, and uh, there's times when you just have to kind of dive in and growing up, that kind of gave me that aspect, that insight mm-hmm. to be like, you know, it's okay. You know, as long as the, the question comes out in a respectful way, in a caring way, mm-hmm. then the other person is going to realize, you know, even though you might look and be like, why on earth are you wearing that? Oh, well, you know, that, you know, this goes back to, you know, I'm wearing like a skull headdress and stuff like that from the Aztec guys, you know, and this is why, um, you know, so it was kind of like, like I said, there's, there's things like that, that we have to, we have to kind of weed through. Nowadays, I'm still fearful of those things, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, as an artist, you know, I, I wear heavily the fact that the information that I give out um, that I do um, is always done in, in a good way. That if somebody comes to me and asks me, hey, can you teach me how to do this? Um, you know, I, I do the best I can uh, to make sure that they have all the information 
that they're doing everything that I could possibly teach them how to do it, my understanding of why it's done. Um, so, and I'm still learning in the process too, because there's times when, you know, as much as I've known or I've learned uh, and I've been taught, I know about a, you know, a raindrop on a, on a pinhead compared to everything that's out there. And there's been times where I, I'm just that, that, that avenue to say, I don't know, yeah. but I know someone who does. Let me connect you with that nation that's right. And there's your grandparents again. Yeah. And you know? it comes to a circle. And that's, yeah. that's a big thing with it. It's we live in circles, you know, it's, there's no beginning or end to it. It's just a new start in that revolution. Um, I, I love that concept of time. And that is yeah. a, a uniquely, I can't say uniquely because there's so many cultures I don't know about, but I was first made aware of it through indigenous cultures, um, the concept of time as a, as a spiral or right. as a, a, you know, something that continually circles around rather than a more European idea of time is linear, you right. know, in, in a more European version, people think of, you know, some things are left behind and we are here, but that was then. And in a spiral version of time, you're continually coming back in relatively close contact with so many things that have happened and you're every, there, everything's still in, in good close reach to one another. And I, I feel so good when I think about time that way. It definitely reconnects you to the people that have come and gone in your life. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, family members that have passed because you know they're 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 still a part of you you know they're not there's no distance you know right. uh, from them no matter how many years pass they're still with you they're still here um, right. you know and and that's that is very very important you know um, and we see it every day we see it in the seasons we see it in right. life right. you know everything you know everything tells you it's a circle so yes. it's, it's like, okay, yeah, so why it. are we doing this line thing yeah so. <laughs> Your thing is like to do lines. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I um I, I there's so much to talk to you about. So let yeah. me let me ask um it's just thank you just for being here. We really, really love this kinds of conversation where the idea of your teacher, this is what I love that we can get into, you know, the question was kind of, you know, how did you feel as a kid and how do you feel now? And you realize that looking at you as a kid and looking at your teacher, maybe right. you were both terrified, right? you know, because as a teacher, you're saying, I'm still frightened. I, I want to make oh, sure yeah. I get it right. And, and as a kid, you're like, I'm scared to death. So you have these two frightened to death people connecting and moving forward anyway, and, uh, right. and, and making the world more alive and continue, you know, continuing forward despite fear. I think that's, that's a huge message that we need to get across. We're yeah. all scared to death. Let's keep moving together anyway. My daughter once asked me, she's like, dad, you know, when you go out on stage, um, cause she's, you know, all my kids at some point when they performed uh, with us out uh, um, different events and shows and schools and, you know, whether it's like, you know, five people in a crowd or, you know, 10,000 people in a crowd. Right. You know, the, the funny thing is, is like, you know, how do you just go out and do it? And it's like, oh, trust me, it's not just going out there and doing it. I right. still get butterflies. I still like question everything that I'm doing. You know, is this right? Is this weird? Is on right? Am I, you know, is the music going to be cued perfectly? Blah, blah, yeah. blah. Um, and, you know, th there's, again, just living in that moment aspect. You just take yeah. a deep breath and you just go, um, you know, and it's not so much where how are people going to perceive this because you ultimately cannot control that right you cannot control that's absolutely true you know and, and that was one of the things like with all my artwork my music is one of the things I, I really struggle to get over is it's it's not about how somebody else views it although I want them to have a connection I want them to get inspired or feel something from it whether it's a dance a song um, a, a piece of wearable art for my leather work or beadwork or something like that. I want them to get an emotion out of it. Um, I want to inspire or just something, you know, that's, that's why I create is again, back to the connections. But at the same time, I can't control whether that's a positive or a negative. And, and that sometimes is the hardest part as, as a person who creates things and, and, and tries to do that and do, does things. You don't know how it's going to be received. And 
that's where you have to just say, I'm just going to have to do it. And it's, you know, ultimately this is vulnerably who I am. This is what I do. And, you know, this is where I keep growing, but, you know, here it is. And, and you brought up your children and that's yes. great. Cause I wanted to ask you about that next. When, uh, when you and I first started working together, you had a toddler who was yes. dancing at your side and uh, yes. tell me, tell me who you have now. Now they multiplied. So three times. <laughs> over. Um, so Thomas is my oldest son. Um, he is a traditional dancer. Uh, he's an artist too. Uh, and he's uh, working towards becoming a personal trainer. Uh, wants to open up his own gym someday. He's really big into fitness and stuff. Incredible dancer, incredible heart. Um, just, you know, and I'm not just saying this because he's my son, um, but he really is just a tremendous, well-rounded kid. And, uh, you know, he's, he, you know, started out, you know, being my firstborn and, you know, drumming with me and singing with me and just loving it. And that was also one of the things for him. It was like, you know, we, we did a pr presentation at a school and all of a sudden it became a popular kid in school, you know? So, which is kind of cool. Cause it was like, it's a, it shows again, a different time in life for people. Um, so then Samantha was born. Uh, Samantha is uh, my second oldest. She's amazing, fancy shawl dancer. Um, she is uh, really big into sports. Uh, just an incredible kid too. Um, very much wears her heart out there every time she does something. Real passionate kid. Um, Nicholas is uh, sort of a comedian out of the four kids. Um, he's a traditional dancer and uh, he does a lot of the leather work with me. Uh, he makes buffaloes and just a whole bunch of really cool things. He's really enjoying doing that and carvings and stuff. Um, and then Victoria, she makes a lot of the more fine art jewelry, like the earrings and stuff like that. She's a fancy shawl dancer. Um, all the kids learn different styles, the things that we've done. And they've been, the Red Vision dance team have uh, really promoted and try to do everything that they can to, you know, share a spotlight on their heritage, their culture, um, to do a family dance team, to get out there and they run workshops and stuff for people that want to learn more in depth about the culture. We have a traveling museum. So we get to set that up that people get to interact with uh, pre-COVID, of course. Now it's... Um, you know, a little bit of adjustment there, but, uh, but it's really amazing to see their growth, their inspiration through the culture, uh, through their dance, uh, through the music, uh, wanting to pick up and learn things. And it's, as a parent, it's, you know, it's humbling for me because, you know, you're not only have showed them something, but they've wanted to willingly pick it up and to continue on. Uh, with doing it and they know the importance of that even at a, at a young age why it's important to to keep the message going to keep uh you know the voices of their ancestors and their parents and grandparents and great-grandparents going um you know they get that and that's uh that's one of the most uh most humbling and loving things that you know you could ever see because you know you did something right right well, and and honestly the the gift of it that that has been bestowed on your family because as as every parent will know you can want your child to, to follow a certain path. And that does not mean that that's the path that the child will choose in their life or, or should right. choose. You know, we, we, we wish many things for our kids and our kids have their own paths to take, but that right. their hearts are so much in that all four of them, that all four right. of them have their hearts yeah. in that direction is, is unbelievable. And the grounding that you talked about in your childhood, when you were expressing, um, that that fire inside of you, mm -hmm. that there's a purpose for everything. That that's not a grounding that every culture gives to their children, and um, that you have passed it on into your children is very apparent when I've met them because they are very grounded people. They they know who they are. They know their purpose. They are bright and open in communicating with others because of those things and their spirit comes forth through their art and through their dance and and uh, just I really want to 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 say how how lovely it is to be in all of your presence because of because of that gift that has been bestowed upon you as a family it's really wonderful yeah, and, like and good we're... job also by the way <laughs> yeah like I said if I can do one thing one thing good um 
Yeah, I, 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 it is it is really humbling. Like I said, I just, uh, you know, he, he, when Tommy was born, I know I was like, I don't know what kind of parent I'm going to be. I'm traveling a lot. I'm on the road, doing lectures. Um, you know, uh, Marie, the, um, their mom, uh, she has the typical nine to five in the medical field. She's Lakota Sioux and Cree. And, you know, we, you know, we, we met going to powwows and doing lectures and programs together. Um, so we, you know, it, it's always been predominant in the family, but within our, our nations and stuff, again, it, it really, like you, you mentioned it, it, it comes down to those choices. Yeah. Um, and it's never something that's, uh, forced upon. And then in our nation, we have something called the first step ceremony where the child that they take their first step during, you know, uh, you know, a festival, powwow ceremony, whatever, then, you know, they're going to walk the path closest to their heritage and culture. Um, it's flip side of that is if they kind of sit down and don't, um, and this is before they can actually walk, uh, they may reconnect to it later in life. But it also shares the importance of, like you mentioned, choice. Um, you know, we have the choice to do really good things or really bad things. Um, you know, it's the free will aspect of, of who we are. And, uh, you know, with my kids, I've always tried to just show them that, hey, this is this is it and involve them as much and 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 give them show them the options. Um, and, yeah, we've been very fortunate and lucky that they've that they've wanted to want to continue those things on and and, and move forward with them. Yeah. So. When when you're getting ready for a performance, either you individually or all of the family together as you know, as the dance team. How, how do you prepare? You know, this is a, a spiritual um, activity. Certainly, right. it's also a cultural activity, but it's also you're you're you are bedecking yourself. And and how do you adorn yourself? How do you, and and what does it mean to you? The things that you put on and prepare to take part in that spiritual activity. And this is I'm again I'm not I'm not asking for the the sacred for the ceremonial pieces. Right. This is I'm, I'm that's a private. I'm right. asking for the public performances. So the public performances and just preparation is I I think again a lot of caffeine. Um, <laughs> so um, in all seriousness, it's what's nice about it, performing with our family is everybody knows their task they know what they have to do so you know making sure that we're you know of course on time and prep definitely puts everybody in a good mood uh get everybody ready you know on time but also understanding when we're putting getting dressed and we're doing this this isn't just a show um for us it's it's never just a show um whether like i said whether it's our the first performance or you know the hundredth thousandth performance that we do for us, it's never, ever just that show. We realize when we're going out there on stage or we're going to talk or we're going to perform the importance that our ancestors are with us, that our family is with us, and that our regalia has meaning. It's our, it's our cultural identity that's coming forth, that's shining. And every step that we take, every movement that we do, it's done in a good way and a good heart. And we really carry that with us out there. Um, early on when I was doing solo performances, I knew that, you know, if I could connect with one person out there, uh, show them why this is important to me, I did my job. You know, just one person, no matter how many cases were in the audience, just what needed to connect to one person, mm -hmm. one person to get it. So I never had a script for anything. Um, I tried doing that once and it was just, you, I couldn't, you just couldn't connect with the audience. Right. Um, there's times you get out there and you're just like, wow, everybody really wants the flute music more. Or everybody really wants to do the dancing more. You kind of have to go with what the spirit moves you uh, with stuff and just live in that moment. And, you know, you have a basic idea of what dances you're going to have set up and, and do and, and where you're going to put this piece and where you're going to do this. Um, but you really kind of go off the cuff with it because you want to see that response from the audience. Yeah. And that's also very important to prepare for because we've also got to take that into consideration 
you know, we're not just doing it, you know, for our own entertainment and because, you know, we're hired for a gig or a show, you know, it's, it's for us, it's so much more deeper than that. And, and, you know, even the night before prepping for it and getting ourselves just in a real focused, good mood, knowing that, you know, Hey, there, you know, um, you know, this is uh, something that, you know, grandma and grandpa would be really proud of doing and, you know, to see us. And even though they're not here in the physical anymore, they're still in the audience, you know, and they get to still see us, you know, and, uh, you know, our brothers and, and sisters and aunts and uncles and stuff that can't physically be there. We're still dancing for them. So we definitely want to, you know, be out there and show them that, you know, that pride, mm-hmm. that sense of uh, oneness that, you know, we're doing this for them, not for ourselves. And that's one of the biggest things as an entertainer that we, and I try to really instill in our performances is that we never stop growing, but we never do this for, for, for me. It's not the me factor. It's for them. It's for being able to do for those that can't. Mm -hmm. Um, So the, you know, the, the beadwork that we have is telling a story for things that we didn't say in in you know in a verbal language it's you know people will see it and understand it by movement um they'll get that connection of it they'll see uh, a color of something and maybe that'll be a connection for them um it's always for them it's always for someone else it's always for something else something greater than us and we're just humble to be a part of that so in in prepping for it it's it's getting our minds right getting our, our feet right getting our hearts right um, knowing that anybody that's in the audience, whether they're able to or, or disabled, um, they're still going to be a part of what we do. We're still going to give them an avenue to be that connection. And, and we've been blessed to, you know, be able to, you know, bring people in that, you know, had different things where they didn't think they could participate in the dance because of whatever situation. And they realize, wow, they can still be a part. They can still make that connection. Um, Because again, it's not, you know, we're not there for us. We're not there just for our own entertainment. But I think it's also important and makes us a little different than, than I guess, maybe uh, another group or whatever. Um, I'm certainly never going to compare that. But, um, you know, we always want to make that connection to our audiences because it's for the greater good beyond ourselves right. um you know so i think that's that's the biggest aspect of, of of why we still do what we do um you know we're always looking to change things up and, and keep growing as artists and as entertainers um and like i said that's one of the things that keeps keeps us passionate about it too it never gets stale never gets old yeah so and at the same time you know it's important to you to be able to as artists extend beyond just the um you know, to, to be kind of global artists, as you were talking about, you know, right. not, not looked at solely as, you know, an indigenous artist, as if that were a, a definition in and of itself. Cool. You are an artist expressing indigenous culture, but that it doesn't, you know, we, that needs to be an expansive idea rather than a, a contractive idea. Yeah, absolutely. And that, you know, that's really, you know, that, that's one of the things that I, I was told long ago, you're never going to do something. Um, I was told that by teachers in my school because I was not, I wouldn't talk, you know. I, they'd ask me questions about, you know, oh, well, what's going on? You know, why do you, you know, why is your eye different? Why is this, why is that? And it always seemed snarky. So I always kind of was like, you know, I'm not even going to talk to you. So I'll just sit here and do my math homework, which I hated, um, you know. So, but the biggest thing was like, oh, well, you know, you don't really talk. You don't really communicate. You don't really put anything out there. So, you know, you're, you're probably not going to really go far in life. You're probably not going to really do anything. And that's really all I ever needed to hear. You know, all I needed is someone to say, nope, you can't, you don't, you shouldn't. And I'm like, okay, I'll show you. Um, and, and that was one of the things that, like I said, inspired me. That's what inspired me to be, you know, a, a visual artist and become a musician and become a lecturer mm-hmm. um, and go further to get a degree and um, to, to really push myself. Uh, because somebody once told me, no, you can't do that. Or you, you know, you'll never be able to, um, I found a way, you know, very much thinking outside of the box, yeah. um, you know, raising a lot of eyebrows at times and then making people go, Oh, so that's what it was. Yeah. You know, that's where you're going with it. Um, you know, I, I've, I've been one of those people that I, I'm going to throw a bunch of paint at a wall and I'm going to see what sticks and then I'm going to fill in the blanks. 
as it as it kind of goes along but I'm always I always want to keep growing yeah. so as an indigenous artist uh I, I I have a great foundation to keep pushing but I've you know with some of my other work like I've been working on stuff that's um like uh Celtic inspired that has a connection to our heritage that's um you know uh Norse mythology inspired um uh that is uh, uh aborigine inspired from Australia um just all over that I find you know hey there's there's something I want to try I want to connect to you know different types of music one song on the new album that I'm working on and I know it's I keep telling everybody hey I'm working on this other CD and whatever um but I had this one that was really in tune to uh Viking music Mm. that was also uh has a very heavy connection with um uh, vocal singing so that like throat goggles that they sang um and that's something that a lot of the tribes here would also do so there's a great connection there that i found so i just you're kind of wrapping up the the song with that um but like i said it's like if somebody says oh you shouldn't go in that avenue you shouldn't try to do this it's like okay yeah let me let me show you where i can go with this As an artist, what is it that you might like to just say if someone ever was inspired enough to ask you about it? Can you think of a question that would be like in that vein or? Um, you know, I think, I think the one question that most people or that I don't think I've ever really been asked, um, believe it or not, has been, well, what is next for you? Um, and I think for me, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm still growing. I'm still going. Um, I want to push the limits as far as I can go, um, regardless of what boundaries. And sometimes that can be a very scary aspect because, you know, back to what we were talking about before with, uh, you know, the critiques and, and the feedback and things like that. Right. You know, you, you can really sometimes take your own inventory and talk yourself out of something. Absolutely. Um, but I think that's that's one of the things that I, I don't think I'm really ever asked is what's next for you. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm very blessed. I have accomplished a lot of things. I've also struggled greatly through that, you know. Um, and one of my uncles once said to me, you know, the hardest thing about being Indian is being Indian. <laughs> um, and I never quite understood what that meant. And then as I kind of grew and I, I, as I matured and I started going to things, I learned that, you know, finding that connection for who and what you are and bringing that with you in every avenue, you'll find that, you'll find that connection. You know, I mean, uh, to be completely candid, there's been times when I've gotten up in the morning and, you know, I've thrown my hood on, I've put my hair up in a bun. Um, I've, you know, put sunglasses on. I've walked into a store. I didn't want to talk about anything cultural. I was just burnt out and stuff like that. I look like whatever. And somebody goes, hey, aren't you Native American? And I'm like, oh. not today. <laughs> and it's, well, and it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, that's like your ancestors, that's your family telling you, hey, no matter where you go, you can't escape what you are, who you are. Um, so what is next? You know, whatever it is, this is what I am. This is what I do. This is what our family does. Um, we're going to keep going no matter what, um, no matter what obstacles we may face, we'll always jump over and we'll get around and we'll get through them. Um, we're going to get there and we're just going to keep growing and we'll see where that kind of goes. So we're, we're definitely going to be watching and learning with you because it takes enormous bravery for all of us to step forward in our own skin each day and be open to becoming more ourselves, becoming more creative, becoming more expressive despite fears and reaching out to other people. And I know you're going to um, continue to be someone who teaches us how to do that with a full heart. And thank you. Um, I, I want to let people know how to, how to do that. How can they stay in touch with you? How can they learn? Um, maybe even invite your dance troupe for a program uh, with them or, or the traveling museum as we get things opening up again. What's, what's the best way for them to reach you? 
So people can, you know, Google and, and find out about us, uh, franklittleberry at gmail.com. Um, and they can, you know, get a hold of us. I can send them all the information. They can uh, friend us on Facebook. We have a new page and stuff that's getting ready to launch, uh, probably, hopefully, in the next couple of days here. We had to figure out a few things because we also want to get some stuff up for sale as far right. as a lot of the jewelry and stuff to help support the team and, and everything we're doing. Um, and, you know, I really appreciate you guys and and everything that the Everhart Museum and, and everybody does. You know, it's, it's, you know, the Council of the Arts, um, all these organizations that I have, uh, you know, wonderful uh, rapport with. Um, you know, I, I, I've always wanted to base everything that we do on the quality of our content, not just on, you know, um, just doing something. And, and it's, it's truly honored uh, to be recognized for that um, because that's the most uh, important thing to me as an individual is, is, you know, to know that people see it and they see the true heart of it. Um, and uh, so thank you for giving us that avenue and that, that, that uh, the option to be able to get out there and, and share these messages and, and to share our art and the support the love and support that we get from everybody is is what really, like I said, keeps us going. Thank you again, Frank. It has been such a joy. We appreciate it. And uh, we will be absolutely staying in close touch with everything that you and the team are doing. And um, we want to thank all of you for joining us on the Everhart Museum's second Sunday folk art series. With our thanks to the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts for making this possible, we appreciate your dedication and your support of folk and traditional artists and artists of all kinds all over Pennsylvania. Thank you. And everyone, we will see you right here again next month on the second Sunday. <laughs>